Welcome to this video lecture. We're looking at the CompTIA Security Plus Guide to Network Security Fundamentals, the fifth edition. This is chapter 10. We're focusing on mobile device security. So the point of this chapter is going to be, listen and compare the different types of mobile devices, look at the risks associated with the mobile devices, list ways to ensure mobile devices are secured, how to apply mobile device app security, and we're going to look at BYOD and BYOD security. All right, so types of mobile devices, normally they are, they have certain characteristics. They're small, they normally have a wireless uh, data NIC. They will probably have a dedicated mobile operating system. The apps, uh, you can acquire them through different means, through typically some type of web store like uh, Google Play or through uh, iTunes or the uh, App Store with iTunes. Data synchronization capabilities will be there and normally they'll sync between the smaller devices and a web service or to a larger computer. They have localized non-removable data storage, meaning the data storage is built on and not upgradable. All right, so moving on, types of devices, they'll have some optional features like cameras, GPS, a lot of them will have a microphone, a lot more of the multimedia devices allow for video and audio chatting. Some do have removable storage devices, just kind of depend on the manufacturer, maybe support. Uh, some of them will have not just a wireless connection, but a wireless and cellular connection. And a lot more of them will have things like Bluetooth or the near field communication, NFC type uh, wireless connections. So it really all just depends on your device and the manufacturer. So when we say mobile device, that could be tablets, that could be laptops, that could be wearable technology, that could be smartphones, that can be a whole list of things. Portable computers, uh, they're going to be very similar to a desktop, but they're going to be smaller. That could be like a notebook or a netbook or a small laptop. Normally, the primary differences is that they're smaller, lighter weight, and uh, are a bit better efficiency on battery power. Laptops were the first really big portable computer, and again, they were very limited on certain type of hardware upgrades, not so much anymore. However, we had things like notebooks, which is a smaller version of a laptop, and netbooks, which is smaller than that. And these types of notebooks and netbooks are really made to consume data, not to generate data. And what I mean by that is they're made for you to like check your email, not to be creating documents and whatnot. So again, here's the comparison between the two. A laptop and notebook size, cooler, and kind of their purpose. Portable computers or sub-notebooks also exist. Those are called Ultrabooks uh, or like a Apple Air. That's always a good one. They're a lot smaller, normally able to fit in the palm of your hand and they're light, uh, light enough for you to be able to hold them there. Again, these are web-based computers. They're going to have a very light version of an operating system, and their main thing is to access the internet, uh, like a Chromebook, for example. Not having traditional applications installed on them, so you're not really going to be working on them. You're going to be consuming information from them, mainly from the web. Uh, very similar to tablets. Though tablets are slightly smaller and they may not be as flexible. Uh, a tablet is again a, s a larger smartphone for example. Uh, anywhere between 5, 7, 10 inches. And uh, they're going to be a touch screen. Again, their purpose is to consume information. Uh, their tablets have more, more capabilities of installing specific apps for the tablets. So you can actually start creating data from them as well. Though they're not really made for long-term working with data sets on them. So they're mainly used for like on the fly. You're out in the field and you want to write an email or 
take photos, things like that. So moving on, we have things like smartphones, which is again a small tablet, smaller tablet, normally used for making phone calls and sending uh, like traditional uh, cellular signals through a regular phone call. It can also have cameras, a music player, it can send both SMS, short message service, or multimedia service text messages. And these are considered handheld personal devices or handheld personal computers because of their uh, computational powers and their ability to run applications. Right now, we actually have more s smartphones than we do regular phones. Again, this slide's kind of dated, but there are more smartphones than regular phones out there. Wearables could be things like um, Google Glasses or an iWatch or any type of wearable device that has a network connection that can send and receive data. Here's an example of wearable. These are Google Glasses. And we have some older devices like PDAs, uh, Palm Pilots notebooks or netbooks these are all older legacy devices that don't really do a whole lot anymore so again we've talked about the mobile device removable storage that's the ability to add some type of sd card typically to both uh, computers and to mobile devices alike to increase storage uh, PC cards uh, standard defines three form factors for types of cards. They differ in their thickness. Uh, things like card bus or PC cards, those are going to be the basis of our SD cards. But more importantly, we have what's called the small small form factor storage, which is both uh, compact flash (CF) and we have uh, we have secure digital cards. SD cards, and that's where we're going to see most of the removable storage is going to be SD cards. We have things like our SD, SDHC, SDXC, SDIO, and so forth. Because we have a lot more different types of SD cards. Compact flash cards are still out there, but they're slowly being replaced by the smaller SD type cards. The important thing here to realize is the different SD cards will have different read and write speeds. And that's what's becoming more and more important, because as the device is trying to access the storage, they need the ability to write and read to that storage as quickly as the device may need. For example, a digital camera may need to be able to write uh, in, be able to write to the storage very fast. All right, so we have different sizes of the SD cards too, like a full size and a mini SD card or a micro SD card. These are gonna be smaller. Uh, the mini and micro are mainly what you find in smartphones and tablets. It just kind of depends. Though there are different types of speed classes. Normally they're the standard and an ultra high speed, but there's more now because again, the faster speeds are required for video and photo taking. We have different class ranks, which will also then correspond to the speeds. And again, this is slightly out of date. So we have like the UHS speed class three, which allows for 30 megabits per second. That allows for 4K resolution for videos, even though uh, a new SD card that I have is actually not a U3 uh, thir uh, 30 megabits. It's actually a U3 60 megabits for uh, 4K video. So again, these are always updating, so do keep that in mind. Moving on, mobile device risk, physical security, location, uh, in uninstalling or installing applications, trusted content, and BYOD risks. We're going to cover each of these major topics as we move forward. For example, uh, physical security. <laughs> A lot of mobile devices are stolen. So we need to make sure that our mobile devices can be secured. Passwords are a good one. Uh, GPS tracking on our devices are a good one. Uh, area of an airport that uh, are stolen, these are for laptops, like luggage or storage area, terminal, in the airplane itself, or even during check-in. 
So the theft is huge. Connecting to a public network is always a concern because if you connect to an external public network, the attackers could eavesdrop and do a man in the middle or a replay attack, thus being able to capture passwords or other sensitive information. Location tracking is a concern with GPS, uh, posting on social media, people can track to see what you're doing and that's a good and a bad thing. Uh, mobile devices using location services, you could be a target of a physical attack and then that causes theft. Uninstalling or installing unsecured applications. A lot of app stores for the different types of mobile devices allow you to download apps. However, that is a concern as well because who makes the apps and how secure are the apps? So the big two ones are Apple, uh, Apple OIS and like the Google Play Store. They both have different philosophies, but like Apple iOS requires people to be a authorized publisher before publishing any of their material and you have to pay to become a publisher where with the Google Play Store you don't. So in certain regards, the Play Store is less secure and Apple iOS is more secure. However, you give up a lot of freedom for that security. So there's pros and cons for both. So they may both have different security flaws. So do keep that in mind. So again, there's pros and cons for the app stores. Oh, I went back, I apologize. Uh, their apps will cost some money, some apps won't be. So again, there are pros and cons, so do some research. Google has the Android, which is the Play Store, which is a little bit more riskier for apps, sometimes. Accessing untrusted content, uh, using QR codes, that's a big one. Uh, it's a matrix or a 2D dimensional barcode that might have embedded code in them. So that's always uh, something you have to be careful of. BYOD policies, basically you can bring your personal device in to do business work on. Uh, users may erase the installation uh, built-in limitations on their smartphones if they do this. That's rare, but honestly, with BYOD, you still have to meet the organization's security profiles, but it's on your personal device. So, the security profile might require you to have like a password or uh, change certain passwords or more complex passwords. So you're going to have to comply to access business resources from your personal device. Even though it's your personal device, you're accessing business information, so they have the right to dictate what you can and can't do from that device if you choose to do so, or if you choose to use that software or your device to access company-owned or, or company-owned resources. So again, companies should have a BYOD uh, policy and the individual using their personal device should also understand those policies and how that will affect the individual's personal device. So let's move on to securing mobile devices. Uh, again, there are steps. Normally, uh, the initial setup of the device. Also understanding it's an ongoing management of the device. Lastly, we have to also contend with dealing with the theft or loss of the device. So, the initial setup of the device may be disable unused features. If you're not going to use it, turn it off. Uh, at least like things like Bluetooth, for example. If you're not using the Bluetooth, if you turn off Bluetooth, you can't use or you can't be a subject of a blue jacking or blue uh, smurfing type of attacks. Also, Think about how locking the screen may be important. Having a either biometric and or a passphrase for your device. Uh, lock screens. Also look at the uh, settings to make sure that after X amount of lockout, uh, lock logging in attempts, there's a lock out feature. So basically, if you try the code five times it will lock it out so you have to wait an hour before you can try again. Uh, pin numbers, like 1, 2, 3, how frequently they're used. Uh, this is just kind of varied depending on the device. 
Does your uh, does your device use encryption? More often than not, they do not natively have encryption turned on. However, these now are features that you can actually turn on. Both Apple and Android devices do have full encryption for the device. It's just a matter of you have to realize you have to turn it on. Control access. There's a key to securing mobile devices and to control access to the device by basically limiting who is authorized to use the information. At a higher corporate level, decisions must be made to focus this on. Many organizations are beginning to focus their uh, efforts on the data and not on the device. We have things like the Mobile Device Management or MDM. This tool allows a device to be managed remotely by an organization. Usually it will involve a server component or a cloud component and you, the end user, will use the client component to connect. We have what's called the administrator uh, or the administration over the air or OTA which will then update or configure the changes to a specific device as the devices require it. Some of the features for MDM tools are rapid enrollment, are uh, being able to apply or modify uh, device settings, enforce encryption, display an acceptable use policy, configure things like calendars, contacts, Wi-Fi, VPN profiles, and it can also deal with discovering device access uh, on the network. So basically you can set up certain devices not to connect to the corporate network if they don't have an MDA approved setting, for example. Some of the other features are approved for quarantine if uh, you have a new device and it's not meeting the new policy, you can quarantine them. Uh, distributing and managing uh, applications are a big one here. Select, uh, selectively erasing data that's on the device. So if it belongs to uh, the corporation or the organization, you can use the MDA to actually delete the information. We also have what's called the Mobile Application Management, or MAM, and this is basically controlling applications, not the device. Moving on is theft or loss. Keep the mobile device out of sight when traveling in higher risk areas. If you are using your device, make sure you have a remote wiping capability. Also look at the Find Your Device applications. Both Apple and Android both have like Find My Phone type applications. This kind of helps transfer the risk of theft because if the device does get stolen, you can use these apps to find it in, limit, in limited circumstances. Uh, alarms, last known location, remote lockout, uh, things of that nature. We also have things like uh, our device security. You can actually have the MDMs and MAMs have things like application whitelisting, geofencing. You can have them actually manage credentials securely as well. We've already talked about BYOD and BYOD security. There are concerns there, so do keep that in mind. And that is the end of this chapter. This chapter is pretty short in content because we cover the same thing in multiple other chapters, so a lot of this we've already discussed, so do keep that in mind. If you have any questions or concerns, please reach out. Thank you, I look forward to discussing some of these other, other options with you.